Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we are going to look at how to import data from multiple Excel files in one folder using Power Query. So I've got this blank spreadsheet on screen and I want to import the data from all of those files into here. And I have this folder. This folder here, it's a simple folder called Reports, stored in my Documents folder, and at the moment it's got three Excel files in it. What I would like to do is import the data from all three of those files and append them to each other, stack them on top into one big list, ready for further analysis. We're going to look at how to do that, and then we're going to speak about a couple of issues that might occur and look at how we can handle those as well. Okay, so let's get this process started. If I click on data up on my ribbon and then the get data button from file and from folder. Now please bear in mind at the time of watching this video, I'm demonstrating this with Excel 2016 in Office 365 and as this is an area of Excel that's been changing quite a lot recently, please don't worry too much if you find this button in a different place or slightly renamed area. But if I click on From Folder, it will prompt me for the location of that folder. So I'll just browse to my Library Documents Reports folder and click OK. So we've got the file path in there. And then I'll click OK again. That will locate the files that are stored within there. So I have these three files. And I'm going to click Edit to go into the Power Query Editor. So that I can perform a few transformations before I look at combining these files or loading them into the worksheet. So here we go, we're in the editor. And you can see the three files I've got with information about them, such as their extension, date created, etc., their path. I've got the opportunity to name the query on the right hand side, but I'm quite happy with that query name. I just want to come in here now, expand the data that's in the files, and perform a few simple transformations. So, where we have this content uh, column at the moment, and I've got these double arrows just next to the header. I'm going to click on those double arrows to expand that and it will prompt me for what information I would like to show and they're showing me data from the first file at the moment I can select different files that I'd like to preview but these files are all very similar in how they look if I click on the sheet this is what they will look like they have a name and some sales information there's nothing really that special to look at in each of them. But we do get this preview. And I'm just going to click on OK. That would expand those in this editor. Here we go. And I've got the two columns of information that you just saw in my preview. And I've also got the source name of the file coming in here. Now, you can see... On the left hand side we've got a bunch of queries that are created as part of this import you can see the reports one at the moment is the only one really of interest uh, to us uh, don't worry about the, the, the volume of files that have been created on the right hand side a few applied steps have also been made and I'm quite happy to leave it as it is at the moment but I'd like to add in a few extra steps because I've got the source name and that's interesting to us because we have the location there of these cells. And I want to use that information, but I don't want those extensions on the end. So I'm just going to come into my split column button for that column by delimiter. And I'm going to split it by that full stop. So it separates the columns at the extension. I'm then going to right mouse click on the column of the extension and remove it. So now I'm left with just the place of the cells. I'm then going to click on that column 
over to the transform tab and I'd like to use format so I can capitalize each word because these are places there should be a capital K and for St. Pancreas it should be a capital S capital P capitalize each word they are converted and then I need to rename this column and I'm going to call it location so a few basic transformations in Power Query there, but the important thing really is that I've managed to import them all into one uh, file, as it will be, and append them on top of each other. Last step here now is to close and load from the Home tab. I shall close and load too, so that I can specify this worksheet. And then we'll look at how making changes to this can be updated. So I've got the opportunity to add it to the data model. I'm not going to worry about any of that. Just want to add it into this, this worksheet here. Into A1. And here we go. Here's our data. And here's all our queries and connections opened up on the right hand side. You can indeed collapse some of that as it gets a bit bit crazy with the volume of them there and I'm only really interested in this reports one with the 19 rows loaded okay so we've been working with this query for quite a while now and it's been working very very well for us we now have a new location and that new location has been added into the list we have Brixton so let's update our query Let's click on data and refresh all of these. And Brixton comes in. So as easy as that, any new files that are added into that folder are going to be refreshed as part of this query. Now this is obviously an incredible tool to be able to import data from multiple files of a folder as simple as that means we don't need to write any laborious VBA code or perform tedious processes any longer. But there are some things we need to be careful and to be aware of. And here's a couple of examples. So in that folder that we are using, there is now another file in there, which happens to be a picture of me. <laughs> but it is a JPEG file. So somehow a different file type has appeared in there. Maybe somebody's dumped a PDF or uh, you know some JPEG of like, the, the company's logo or something. And our query is not going to appreciate that. So if I was to refresh this query again, we now get an error that there is a table not in the expected format. Let's see another common issue in practice. If I was to refresh this query again, this time I have a slightly different error, saying now that it can pro cannot process it because the file Kingston is currently being used by another process. And you can see how when a file is already been opened, which is what this is, that it starts with that tilde at the front. And you can see that in the description of the error, if we weren't aware of such things before. So that Kingston file is currently already open, and it cannot perform the process if that is the case. So if I was to go to view and switch windows, you can see Kingston is an open file. So that's another issue that we need to take into account and we need to work around. Okay, so let's go through that process again, but this time we are going to handle those errors. So data, get data from file, from folder. And we shall recreate this query. I shall browse for the folder. So it's in the documents folder and it's the reports folder. And click OK and we shall get a preview of what's in that folder. And you can see the two issues that I demonstrated. I have the open Kingston file, it's still open, 
and I've got the JPEG file still in that folder. So let's click on edit to come into the editor and let's deal with those. So let's start by filtering out the JPEG file. We have this extension column which is incredibly useful right now because we can now specify that we only want Excel files which I did not do in the previous query. So let me come into the filter drop down. Text filters begins with. Now it's important that I'm taking this route. I'm not going to come in here and just check and uncheck specific boxes. I could do, but I want to be careful here because I do have a macro enabled file. I have a .xlsm file in here as well. And I might have a .xlsb or a previous format, a .xls file. So although I could do that, I don't know what changes might happen in the future and it's safer for me to choose begins with and then to come in here and to specify .xls. .xls begins with that. I'll then click OK and that will filter out the JPEG file. So I'm left with my four files plus the open Kingston file. Now let's go and expand our content area because we can handle the Kingston file now with a built-in checkbox. I'll click on that expansion and you might have noticed this setting when I did the previous process but right at the bottom here we have skip files with errors. So if anybody tries to refresh this while somebody else has got one of the files open, it will skip that error. So that is really useful. We don't have to go and try and filter out those open files or any other technique, which you might see people do. We can just check the box to skip any files with errors. You can see that all the files are in here in the preview. I'm just going to make sure they're skipped. I'll specify what sheet I want to import. Click OK. And that will expand it like before. I can then go through my other transformations that I demonstrated beforehand. So with the first column selected, uh, I can split column by delimiter. Remove the extension column select my name column and transform that into capitalize each word and then rename it location. And now we have an example of the query that will not be hitting any errors when files are opened and will filter out anything that is not an Excel file that may appear in that folder. Let's close and load this to this worksheet and you can see it's not affected. We have our Brixton, Hammersmith, Kingston and St Pancreas files all appended into one sheet. So let's see how this all works now. If I bring the folder into screen, I've still got a JPEG there. Somebody has now added a new place, Euston's in. So that was not there previously. St Pancras, Kingston, Hampshire, Brixton. Got Euston in here now. Somebody has also added a PDF. There is a PDF file in here. I do not want that appended. What is also going on this time is that somebody is working with the Hammersmith file. So previously the Kingston one was open. This time we refresh it. Somebody's in Hammersmith. But this will not be a problem data, refresh these connections and in comes Euston. We have a new file in here and our query was able to ignore any errors produced by the Open Hammersmith file and to also exclude the PDF file in addition to the JPEG because it did not begin with .xls in the extension. So this is how easy it is to import data from multiple Excel files 
from a folder in these recent versions of Excel with Power Query. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.